So tonight I did two things for the first time. One, I went to the Fox Theater in Atlanta. And two, I saw Purple Rain. Obviously why I'm wearing purple, although I wear this hat all the time. It is a great hat. So I had never seen Purple Rain, which is very strange considering multiple things. One, I love prints. Two, I am a connoisseur, if you will, of 80s cinema. And three, particularly music films of the 1980s. So how had I not seen this movie? I don't know. Um, it's Part of me wishes I'd seen it when I was younger um, because it's very <laughs> problematic to say the least. Um, I think if I'd seen it when I was younger I would have like a reverence for it um, where I could be like, eh, it's still fun. But the music is still wonderful and Prince is such an amazing performer and it's I'm just very grateful that um, you know, his performances were captured in there. I was trying to get my little bracelet up. It's not working. I have this, this bracelet. It's going to die soon. Well, just too soon. Too soon. Um, it was nice to see it with a bunch of, of true fans because um, everyone was just going through the emotions, you know. And um, I knew all the songs, but I didn't know, like, what the plot was going to be. What I found interesting about the plot was that um, it certainly felt like it was trying to say something about um, being a loved one of someone who is abusive, uh, but it didn't really say anything. It showed a lot, but it didn't really like delve into the psychology of it, um, which I guess, you know, kind of expecting psychology in a... Um, prolonged music video from 1984 is not necessarily what you're going to get, you know. Um, it definitely sends a lot of mixed signals, uh, but it also really feels like the way a lot of people felt in 1984 and a lot of um, just coming off of the 70s and the way a lot of women in um, midnight folk films and things were treated, just par for the course. Uh, and, you know, women in, in the music video scene. So, what are you going to get? Um, what I found particularly interesting, I just read this book by um, James Baldwin where he talks about film. And he, he talks about um, um, the Defiant Ones and I guess he's coming to dinner. And he basically ex talks about how there's scenes in the, both those films where... If, if an actual like black American person had written the script, the characters would not do what they do because a, Baldwin, you know, says a black American would know not to say that or wouldn't feel the need to say some of the things that are said. But because it, those both those films were written by and were made for white audiences and white consumption, um, they present a form of black America that doesn't exist. Right, and, and sort of taking that and transposing it into, like, men writing films about women or just women in general. It, it, there were aspects of this film where the character, the women characters, even for abusive women who were in abusive relationships, do things that I felt a woman wouldn't do. And you can kind of tell that, like, there wasn't much input, creative input from the women. Um... I feel, you know, I feel like that's, I'm going to look at every single film ever written by um, men featuring women that way with that, that idea. Um, I kind of almost wish I had watched, I'd read this Baldwin book before I did A Year With Women because a lot of what he was saying about black Americans and white cinema is sort of how I felt last year about women in male cinema. So, um, there you go. Miss Fanny Braun in the background there. <sighs> now I got really way too deep for Prince. Um, talk about, like, the most sexiest, like, sex. Not, it's like, there's, like, not even any nudity, really. And yet it's so sexy and it's so beautiful. And, like, ah, oh, God, he was a sexy man. And, um... 
There's one scene towards the end where he's like, it's just his back as he walks down a hallway, and you're just like, thank you for that that moment, director slash prince. Um, oh, when he's singing, is it the Nikki song? Like, holy shit, great. So what was I gonna say? I had one last thing. Oh, costumes. I want every single costume. I want everything that Prince wore. I want everything that Apollo. Apollina wore. I want everything that all the extras wore. I want everything that Revolution wore. It's just, it's, it felt like this would be a great sort of double feature with, um, a triple feature with, like, if you did, like, a quadruple feature and do this and Flashdance and, uh, Ladies and Gentlemen, The Fabulous Stains and Streets of Fire are all in one go, I feel like my brain would melt. We need, like, a fifth one. That kind of thing needs, like, five. Um, I'm not sure what we'd add for the fifth one, but something good. Anyways, that's Purple Rain. It was directed by Albert Mangoli. Written and direct. It was written by Albert Mangoli and William Mullen. What else did Albert Mangoli do? Oh, my internet doesn't work. Okay, never mind. Um, my internet doesn't work in this room. So that I'm gonna stop this before it gets rid of the page that I was looking at. This is 1984's Purple Rain. I'm glad I saw it for the first time on the big screen. Now I just want to listen to Prince songs and fall asleep.